Greetings and welcome to Faith Moments with Dina Marie, a weekly podcast to proclaim and to ponder our Sunday Mass readings. Welcome those of you who might be listening today on Matre Day Radio or on our Hail Mary media app. If you haven't already downloaded that app, I encourage you to do so. I've mentioned that quite a bit, but it takes several times for a message to come through for us to take action on that message. And so I'd invite you, if you do use uh, apps on your smartphone, you just type in the words Hail Mary Media, and that'll pop up with the free download, which this podcast and many other Catholic podcasts are available, as well as a lot of prayers, access to Catholic media, Catholic news. If you're living in the in the states of Washington and Oregon, has a lot of events that are going on and access to that information as well. So it's Hail Mary Media, and we thank you for downloading and sharing that app with others. Today is Mother's Day on May 14th, a beautiful day to honor our mothers. And I want to just recognize all women because women are designed and created by God to be the givers of life, to be those that bear life. So all of you, whether you've had your own children by birth or not, you're all mothers. You're those who nurture you nurture life. You're those who give life. And so I just want to honor and recognize the beautiful gift of motherhood. And so whether you are a physical mother and have given birth to children, you've adopted children, you have foster children, we all have spiritual children. And we all through our daily lives and our vocation as women, as women of faith, no matter what age, no matter what vaca- vocation that is, that we are the nurturers and givers of life. We're the ones that encourage those to grow in their life. And so just happy Mother's Day and particularly invite you to bring our Blessed Mother into that celebration. She is our spiritual mother. She's the mother of the church and she's given to us by Jesus himself. He's given us his mother to help us to give life, to nurture life, to share life and to reflect reflect the truth and the hope of eternal life that is promised to us by Christ, by our Father. And so happy Mother's Day on this sixth Sunday in Easter, sixth Sunday of Easter. And we hear some beautiful readings. And I want to start today with the entrance antiphon, because as I go through these readings at least six times, and if you add the times we pray and and proclaim the psalm, there's at least nine times that the word joy or rejoice is heard in these readings. And so that's a real That's a real common theme and a thread I want to focus on today, as well as how do you, how do I reflect the Father? So with that, the entrance antiphon for today's Sunday Mass is proclaim a joyful sound and let it be heard. Proclaim to the ends of the earth. The Lord has freed his people. Alleluia. And that psalm Uh, Well, actually, it comes from Isaiah 48. That antiphon takes me into the Acts of the Apostles. I think about what we hear about in the life of the early church, the, the growing of the first Christians, the growing pains that they all experienced, the persecution. And we're going to hear about the first heavy persecution of Christians where the first early Christians were fleeing all over the nations, uh, but proclaim a joyful sound and let it be heard. Let it be heard. Let that joyful sound of Christ be heard in what you do, in what you say, and how you leave things. When you come into a room, you should, you should reflect the Father. You should reflect through the sound. It might be the sound of your voice. It might be in the sound of your body language. Proclaim to the ends of the earth what that the Lord has freed his people Alleluia. There is freedom. There is true freedom in the hope in Christ. And that's a beautiful way of just beginning to look at these readings that we hear today. The collect, again, the first prayer that our, our, our priest will pray during this sixth Sunday of Easter is this. And again, listen for the word joy. Let us pray. 
Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And again, that collect referring to our Easter season, these days of joy as we're honoring the risen Lord, that doesn't end at Pentecost. In fact, it leads us into the truth of what we believe in the resurrection of the dead. We relive in remembrance, and I love this line, and it's going to come through in our readings today, we may always hold to in what we do. We're going to hear today what Jesus calls us to do. So our first reading in the sixth Sunday of Easter comes from the Acts of the Apostles. This is chapter eight. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 66. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you, sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God, who refused me not, my prayers or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 3. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Our reading for the gospel today comes from John chapter 14. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, 
the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him, but you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Easter season continues to help to instruct us on our roots, where we came from. I, I love the focus of the Acts of the Apostles to hear and to remember the beginnings of the birth of Christianity and to see what that birth of Christianity was like. What were the hardships? What were the difficulties? What were the growing pains that the apostles and the early church had to spread the good news of Jesus Christ years, weeks and months and years after the actual passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus? And so, first of all, I want to look at the actions of, of Philip and I'm just going to look real quickly in the scripture here because in the Acts of the Apostles, we hear this account of Philip, and this is a different Philip than the first apostles. This is one, this is a Philip who, if we go to last Sunday's readings, we hear about the beginning of the diaconate or a group of men who would be serving the church and serving the church in a particular way. And so the need for assistance to the priests or the, and the bishops of the church. And so there was a creation of seven men originally, and that was Stephen, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timion, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch. Now the chapters right before the reading we hear today talk about Stephen. And if you want to just read a beautiful account of our faith, Stephen's discourse is chapter seven in the Acts of the Apostles. It's beautiful. In fact, it's so beautiful and so inspired by the Holy Spirit that Stephen is martyred. He's martyred because the men around him, they're, they don't see the Lord working and they martyr and stone Stephen to death. And we call Stephen the first martyr of the church. And now there is this heavy persecution of the Christians and a man named Saul is heading that persecution. And so then we hear right before this account of Philip that there broke out such a persecution that all of the Christians were scattered through Judea and Samaria, the apostles stay close to Jerusalem, but then the other disciples will go out. And so Philip and probably the other, the other disciples and the other, the other deacons went out to go proclaim the good news in the midst of real great persecution. And so here we at Philip and he goes to Samaria. And what do we know about Samaria? We know the episode of Jesus going to the well at noon and a woman comes from Samaria. We learn from that particular story in the church, in the scriptures, that Samaritans and Jews while they were all Jews, they had different interpretations of culture and tradition. And so they were not, they didn't get along at all. And, and yet we did have the woman from the well go back and proclaim Christ. And we had people following Christ in Samaria before Jesus's passion. So 
it makes me wonder, you know, how many of those people continue to follow Jesus at his passion? And did they know about the resurrection? I don't know. But here comes Philip to go back to Samaria and start to preach and proclaim. And so what happens is he proclaims the Messiah to them. And they were all, the Samaritans were looking for the Messiah. The woman at the well talked about, you know, we are waiting for the Messiah. He is the one that we are waiting for. He is the one to come. And so they had great hopes in the Messiah. And so Philip, as he proclaims and preaches, beautiful miracles are happening. Unclean spirits are being, are, are coming out of possessed people and paralyzed and crippled people are being cured. And there's great joy. There's great joy in the witness of Christ. As Philip is a witness, he's a witness as he preaches word, as he has an example, as he does this with love and joy, that people in Samaria are filled with joy. And so word gets back to the apostles in Jerusalem. What's going on? There's there's a starting of the building of the church now in Samaria, praise God. And so they go, but what do they do? They bring the Holy Spirit. And it makes me think we're in a season right now, at least in our church. And I think for many, it's called the, uh, the confirmation uh, trail that our bishops are going around to communities and they are bringing about the sacrament of confirmation. They're pouring upon the heads of our young people, particularly there's some adults who will be confirmed during this time, but mostly for our young, young people, the confirmation this gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit is given to us and it leaves an indelible mark on our souls at baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit when we're baptized, but there is another confirmation of the Spirit. And I can just see this confirmation of the Spirit. It says that these people here in Samaria were baptized in the word, in, in Jesus, they believed in Jesus, but now they're given the Holy Spirit to help to guide them, to help them and encourage them in times of doubt, in times of persecution, which will happen because it's already happening right now. And so they are being baptized by the Holy Spirit. And we see many signs they, they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. It just shows me how important it is to, to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, if we've been baptized properly in the church, if we've received confirmation, yes, we've received that gift of the Holy Spirit, but how are you cooperating with that Holy Spirit? Do you know about the Holy Spirit? And so that Holy Spirit, it's just like being given this, you know, can you imagine Amazon? I was just driving to Beaverton the other day and where my route goes, there was about 10 Amazon vans all in a line. I figured there must be a warehouse real close and they were all going out ready to deliver in the morning. And I thought, how many packages are in those Amazon vans? big vans filled with things. I see them every day in my neighborhood, stopping here and there and unpacking things. So imagine if, you know, 10 of those vans came to your house and unloaded all of these gifts and you just put them in your garage and you never opened one of them. Can you imagine all of those things that could be useful? They could be helpful. They could be fun. They could be, we could learn from, but we didn't open one of those packages. Can you imagine that? That's what happens when we don't open up the gifts of the Holy Spirit and practice those gifts of the Holy Spirit. In our psalm, we get to that word joy again. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. And I thought about, you know, we can think about people, humans crying out with joy. I think about, think about, have you ever seen the Handel's Messiah performed live? I've seen that several times performed live and you're in the audience and you see that chorus, you see the, you see the orchestra, you see the choir, you see these beautiful voices singing, Alleluia, Alleluia. You know, you just see the, the voices crying out for joy. But what about the earth, the trees, the birds, the flowers, the rocks, the dirt, the mountains, do they cry out to God for joy? 
Oh my goodness. Look at the azaleas. I, I was walking down the street. And I look at those azaleas. They're just bursting with color. They're crying out to God for joy. Joy, God created those beautiful azaleas. We have beautiful rhododendrons here. The, the, uh, the daffodils are gone. There's still a few tulips around. The earth is crying out to God with joy. The beauty of creation, when it lives to be as it is created, it's crying out to God with joy. Shout joyfully. Are you crying out to God with joy and just living fully out your life, your vocation? This is part of how we cry out to the world with joy because what Jesus continues to remind the apostles, and this is before his passion, he's speaking to his disciples and he says, that he is going to give us the advocate. And he talks about that the world will not recognize the spirit. The world will not, but you know him because he remains with you and I will be with you. And God through Jesus gives us this invitation. If you love me, you will be my disciples. You will keep my commandments. And I will ask the father and he's going to give you the gifts. He's going to give you all those gifts, the Holy spirit and the advocate will be with you always whom the world cannot accept. The world can't see the advocate. The world doesn't know the advocate, you know, because you know, Jesus, you know, the Lord, you believe in the Lord. And through that belief, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you've been baptized, you've received confirmation, you've received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you know, and you reflect Jesus, the Father. God is not going to leave us alone. He will come to you when we have that gift of the Holy Spirit, no matter what happens to us in our lives, no matter how many difficulties come up in our lives you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And if you haven't been baptized yet, go to a Catholic church, learn about the Holy Spirit, learn about Jesus and be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And so how do we love? How do we follow the law? It's not a matter of following these rules it's a matter of if I follow and change my life in accordance to Jesus with love, that's going to reflect to others. And the way that I live my life, last week we heard Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. That life is heaven. That life is eternal life. The way that I live my life by following the Ten Commandments with joy because I alter my heart to Christ's heart and I live in that peace and that joy that leads me to heaven. And so my way of life, this sign over here says, prayer changes things. My prayer, our father who art in heaven, my prayer should change my life to be more like Jesus. Is it? Is it today? This is something that we can ask ourselves. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my father will love him and we will come to him. Jesus promises us eternal life when we follow him. We follow the way. The Holy Spirit gives us the truth. And through that joyful yes, we receive eternal life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day and blessed Easter.